Whilst I think it is a really good report in trying to understand the impacts between 1.5 and 2 degrees centigrade of warming, when it comes to what we have to do about it, I think, again, it, it runs scared of really being very honest. And given it has, it's as effectively a scientific report, I think our role as scientists and as academics is to tell it like it is, not to colour it or sweeten the pill to make it more attractive. So my comments here are that, and it's not just with this report, it's been repeatedly come out of the IPCC. So whilst we're quite direct and honest about the impact side, when it comes to what we have to do about this, we run scared. We don't want to scare the politicians or the public. We don't want to um, uh, move away from this sort of the energy systems that we have today. So we always try to broad, broadly sort of massage the status quo, so incremental changes, if you like. And what I'm saying is that actually when you really look at the numbers behind the report, look at the numbers the science comes out with, then we're talking about a complete revolution in our energy system. And that is going to beg very fundamental questions about how we run our economies. And again, you can turn around and say, well, that seems just you know, far, too, um, far too removed from the current economic system we have. But we have to remember it's only been, well, it's 10 years now since the banking crisis, and many parts of the world are still suffering the repercussions of that banking crisis. So the current economic framework has struggled um, within its own remit, if you like. So I think this, this has been a real opportunity, which we are now losing, to reshape that economy so it's an economy that's suitable for society, not a society that's suitable for the economy. And I think the policy makers, sort of the academics, have just run scared of this, uh, of being honest about what our numbers tell us about the rates of change that we, will, that we require and how we have to move the productive capacity of our society from building second homes for professors or private jets or private yachts or large four-wheel drive cars from moving from that to building public transport, electrification, improved homes for everyone. So it's a, it's a shift of that productive capacity, the resources and the labour, from the, if you like, the luxury for the 20% to the essential low-carbon infrastructure for all of us.